My name is Steve Bookman. I'm the University Archivist here at ODU, and today I'm just going to give you a brief introduction into the world of archives. I'm going to start with a general overview about um, what archives are, um, what archivists do, um, how we collect and describe collections, and then I'm just going to give you a brief overview as to how that relates to what we do here specifically at Old Dominion University Archives. Now you might ask yourself, what are archives exactly? So just for simplicity's sake, Archives are a collection of historical records of a person, family, or an organization that have been selected for permanent retention. They are most commonly unpublished and were created as a result of an administrative, legal, business, or social activity. Some examples include letters, minutes from board meetings, diaries, scrapbooks, photographs, email, and even social media content like tweets. Our archivists are information professionals charged with collecting, preserving, and describing and making available those archives. While there are similarities between both libraries and archives, such as making information accessible and available to the public, they both may contain books, they both have a cataloging function, there are some differences between the two. The first is in the collecting scope. While libraries tend to collect material on many different topics, archives tend to have a limited scope in what they collect in libraries. The Disney Archives, for example, collects the works of the Disney Corporation. Law archives collect legal papers and personal papers of lawyers. There are even archives based on specific subjects such as Jewish, Jewish history or LGBTQ history. The second is in access. While libraries are mostly open to everyone and books and databases can be checked out and browsed, archives don't circulate as they are rare and can't be replaced. They are housed in secure, non-browsing stacks and can only be serviced by staff members. Some archives are open only to a selected audience. Corporate archives, for example, are mostly only open to the current employees of that corporation. Most collections are available to the public, but others may have some restrictions, such as um, collections that have health and personnel records and also personally identifiable information. The third difference is the type of material. While items in libraries are published, as we discovered earlier, archives contain mostly unpublished material that isn't located anywhere else. In addition, archives may also contain artifacts, scrapbooks, and other unique items not located in your typical stacks. With a lot of archives today facing concerns such as lack of resources and space, you may ask, how do they decide what to keep? Most archives have a collecting policy and mission statement that guide them in what to collect. For example, here at ODU, our collecting policy states that we accept records documenting the history of ODU, as well as material related to the history of Hampton Roads and Virginia. Once we decide on something, we try to get ownership with a deed of gift that transfers the rights to the collection over to us. Organizational and business records tend to stay in the same organization, so instead of a deed of gift, the records are transferred from one area of the institution to another. At ODU, for example, records can be transferred from the Department of Teaching and Learning to the archives. The basis of collecting decisions involve the records history and content, authenticity, order, and completeness as well as its condition to name a few. Once a collection has been received by the archives, a custodial record is created to document who gave the collection and when, what topics and format types are in the collection, date ranges, how big it is, and any preservation concerns. We would next organize the collection and preserve them in acid-free folders and boxes. Finally, a research guide or a finding aid is created to let researchers know what is in the collection along with a container listing of boxes and folder titles. Most finding aids today are available on the web. So in the slide today, on the left-hand side, you'll see um, a before and after images of processing where the image on the, the far left is of a new collection that just came in from the donor that is unorganized and is in um, old acidic boxes and folders. And the image on the right of that is in our new acid-free folders and boxes that's nicely arranged in the collection. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see um, an example of one of the finding aids that we have online here in the archives at ODU. Once a finding aid is created, it is available to the public to use in their research. Archival research is a type of primary source research which involves seeking out and extracting evidence from original archival records. Archivists conduct preliminary research about the collection to arrange and describe the collection, but researchers provide in-depth insight into the collections. Archivists are also recognizing the influence we have in granting power to individuals, groups, and movements by collecting their memories and documenting their histories. In the past, archives concentrated on collecting famous or prominent members of society, 
which almost always tended to be rich white men. In general, archivists collectively seek to document and preserve the record of the broadest possible range of individuals, socioeconomic groups, governance, and businesses, especially everyday people, and those who have been overlooked or marginalized. Most archives rely on donations, so archivists have to educate and establish trust with donors. There also is ethics among archivists as well. If one repository knows another repository collects that material, they try to refer them to that repository so they don't split up collections. Now you know more about what archives are, what archivists do, how we collect, arrange, and describe collections and make them available to the public, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about how all that relates to what we do here at Old Dominion University. The archives at ODU is made up of three collecting arms. The first is the University Archives. The University Archives documents the history of ODU from its founding in 1930 to the present. That includes records related to offices and departments on campus, such as the Office of the President, the Provost, the Deans, the VPs, and, but it also includes um, student life records, uh, student and staff organizations, alumni records, faculty personal papers, photographs, as well as AV materials. The second collecting arm is the manuscripts area. This area documents the history of Norfolk, Hampton Roads, and Virginia, but also covers other areas of the United States. It includes personal papers and family papers, organizational records, as well as maps and blueprints. Some of the strengths of our collection include African American, women's, and maritime history, as well as armed conflicts such as World War II and the Civil War, and LGBTQ history. The third collecting arm of the archives is the Rare Books Department. This area collects rare and limited edition books from 1550 to the present. Some of the strengths of the collection include the Tidewater area and Virginia history, but also books that help support the collections we currently have. Finally, here's a list of resources for more information about the Archives Department and our holdings here at Old Dominion University. The first is our Special Collections Database, which is our finding aids or research guides um, that help you find more information about our collections. We also have our Digital Collections, which feature digitized photos, old histories, and other digitized collections from our holdings. We also have the University Archives Live Guide, which helps you um, find research topics related to university history. We also have the Special Collections LibGuide, which is which introduces you to the to the ODU Special Collections and our services that we provide here in, in, in at ODU. It also features our wiki page, which is um, a frequently asked questions related to ODU history, which is kind of fun. And then also we have our we do have some uh, curated digital exhibits as well that fe feature images and digitized versions of our holdings. And before I go, I want to put in a plug of that we do have opportunities for field studies and internships, as well as possible graduate assistantships in the department too. So if you're interested in doing your required um, field study with us, please just let me know. My contact information is on the first slide there. Um, and I've enjoyed um, speaking with you today, and I hope everything goes well with you, and best of luck in law library school.